Question 29. Zoe takes out a $25,000 loan to buy a car. She's charged interest at 6% per annum, it's compounded monthly, and she pays instalments of M dollars at the end of each month. Find M if Zoe pays off the car in five years. Now, before I start this question, I underline the important parts and I think about what I'm going to need. I've got 6% per annum and yet it's compounded monthly. So the first thing I would do is say 6% per annum is the same as half a percent per month. So that means my R, when I'm using my compound interest formula, has to be 0 0.005. You need to get that right. And I prefer to write that down, so I'm really clear. Also, I know that five years is 60 months. I jot that down. And I need some sort of expression here, some sort of recursive formula to show how much is owing. It's a loan. So on that first day of the loan, Zoe owes $25,000. But by the last day, at the end of the five years, she owes nothing. So I need to come up with some kind of an expression for how much she owes at any one time. And it makes sense to do it once a month at the end of each month. So I'm going to let a n be the amount owing after n months. Now, lots of people won't write that down, but if you start coming up with a formula for a n, an examiner might be like, what's a n? So defining it helps me keep it really straight in my mind what I'm doing. So now I can come up with a formula for a n, which is the amount that's owing at any one time. Now, I want to think about what a1 would be. How much does she owe at the end of the first month? Well, the first day she walked out of the bank holding her $25,000, she owed $25,000, didn't she? So she owed all of that. But by the end of the month, the bank would have charged interest on it. So normally they'll charge interest and then you'll pay your instalment. So when they charge the interest, that means they'll be multiplying it by one point zero zero five which is just one plus the rate and then after interest has been charged she'll pay off an amount we're not sure how much so we're calling that m so that's how much she owes at the end of the first month does that make sense and you really need to get that right get things in the right order she's charged interest on what she owes and then she pays off her installment now at the end of the second month she starts the month owing all of that so I'm going to start by just writing all of that down again. Now, this is a little bit longhand, but keeping it straight makes it make sense. Now, that's how much she owes at the start of the second month, but by the end of the month, that whole amount has had interest charged on it, which means we have to multiply it by that. And then the last thing that happens, she pays her instalment. Now, I could leave it like this, but I'm trying to set up a pattern. So I want to expand these brackets and multiply my 1.05 by this part and this part. When I multiply it by this part, I get 25,000, 1.005 squared, and then I get minus m multiplied by 1.005. So I've expanded the brackets out, now I need to tack on the minus m at the end. I've got a bit of a pattern here, I've got a number, I've got this squared, minus m, not squared, minus m. That's the end of the second month. Now for the end of the third month, I want to take all of that, I want to raise it with interest, and then I want to subtract um, m off it. So I'm thinking, why don't I just start with this version I've got here for a2, I'll save a line, call it a3, let's raise it to interest straight away, and then subtract out m. I've run out of space a little bit there, but obviously I'll just keep that going. All right, let's do the same thing again and expand our brackets. This is going to be a better version of A3 now. I need to multiply 1.005 by this part, this part, and this part. So when I multiply it by the first part, I'm not going to have 1.005 squared. It's going to be cubed now. And this won't be raised to the power of 1. It will be raised to the power of 2 and minus m to the 1.005 minus m. So that's a better version of A3 now. Now you need to make enough of these till you can spot a pattern, and I think I'm there now. The first term always has 25,000 multiplied by some stuff, and then the other terms all have minus m, minus m, minus m. And it seems like the number of these goes down. I've got squared to the power of one, and to the power of nothing, or I've just got one there. So I think I'm ready now to come up with a formula for the amount that's owing at any one time. Now you can come up with a n here 
and then let N be 60. Or you could jump straight to coming up with A60. It really doesn't matter. It's probably simpler just to come up with A60. I'm going to do AN just because this is a nice method that I can use for lots of other types of questions as well. All right, so with AN, we've got 25,000. And this is always raised to a number that's the same as that, isn't it? When it was squared, we, we had a 2. Oh, I've sort of messed that up a little bit because I skipped a line. But you know what I'm getting at here. So this is going to be to the power of n. And then all of the other terms have minus m in them. So I'm going to bring minus m out the front of brackets. And now I've got a bunch of terms here. I'm going to start with the smallest one and then add the rest up because the smallest one is 1. So if I start with that one and then this one, I know that if I've got a bigger number for n than 3, I'm going to go up to a number that's just 1 smaller than it, or n minus 1. So I need to add this, and I'm going to keep on going so I can put dot, dot, dot all the way up to n minus 1. All right, now I can get even better we can come up with a better formula now for a n. This first part has to stay there. We can't do much with that except write it down again. But this second part, I've got my minus m, and then I've noticed that everything in brackets here is actually an arithmetic series. Now it's an arithmetic series that it's that has a first term of one. And that's handy that I put the smallest term there because it's going to be easier to deal with. If you had your first term as this one and they were all round the other way, it'd still work out fine. The working would just be a little bit um, more, more difficult. And then the rate, well, what is multi being multiplied to get to the next term? 1.005. So what I can do now is I can use that, I haven't got much space here. I can use that sum to n terms of an arithmetic series that says you need a, r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. And I'm going to use that to replace everything here in the brackets. So I've got my a, well that's just 1. I don't really need to multiply by that. That won't change anything. But in brackets, I need r to the n minus 1. So that's 1.005 to the power of n minus 1. Now, to the power of n means to the power of however many terms you have. So stop for a second and say, how many terms are actually in this geometric series? Well, the 1.005s go up to being raised to n minus 1, but there's actually n terms, aren't there? Because if you consider this is 1, this is actually 1.005 to the power of 0. And if you start counting from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, and get up to n minus 1, you've actually got n terms. So that n is correct there. And I've thought that through just to double check it over, and now I need r minus 1, so I can easily take 1 off that number and just put 0 0.005. All right, now I've got a formula for a n. Now, what I really need is a formula for a 60, and I need to let that equal 0, because the amount that Zoe owes after 60 months is nothing. So just to save myself a little bit of space here, my next line or perhaps some people would have jumped straight to this one, would be a60, where I'm letting n equals 60, and n equals 60 over here. And now there's only one unknown, m. So on my next step, I need to clear some space. Let's get rid of the actual question. I need to let a60 equal 0 and solve for m. So I've got all of this equaling zero. Now it's got a big part here minus another large section. If those two things subtract to equal zero, then this whole part here must equal that whole part there. Now I'm just taking a slight shortcut because there's so much to write down here that you're wanting to save a bit of time. So I'm going to cut straight to saying that 25,000, 1.005 to the power of 60 must equal m 1.005 to the power of 60 minus 1 over 0 0.005. All right, I'm solving for m. So how do I get m by itself? Well, obviously, it's been multiplied by all of this. 
so I need to divide both sides by that. So at this point you can hop straight to putting it all in your calculator really if you want to and say m is equal to all of the stuff that's on this side divided by all of that and it's a bit awkward having a fraction over a fraction but hey your calculator can deal with it. Some people will go straight to that. Personally I would probably tidy it up a tiny bit more. I don't know why it's just how I'd do it. Multiplying both sides by 0 0.005 will change this number and now you've just got a single number um, there. So what I'd do there is I'd say let's multiply both sides by this so that gives me 125, like that. And now it's just a little bit easier to put in the calculator to find m if you divide both sides by this, which gives me something slightly simpler to put in, like that. Now putting all that in, you should get m equal to $483 and to the nearest cent it's 32 cents.